to those seeking to subvert and destroy Christianity in the United States by failing to protect its borders, this report explains that now includes powerful forces within President Trump's own Republican Party who have aligned themselves with these supposed demonic globalists against the American people, and one of whose most shameful displays was evident this past weekend after the highly influential pro-Trump columnist Ann Coulter rightfully assured President Trump that his poll numbers would go through the roof if he'd build his border wall, and to which President Trump quickly responded to by declaring that he'd shut down the entire U.S. government if he didn't get funding to do this. But of course, that was met with never-Trumper Republicans and leaders, Speaker Paul Ryan and Majority Leader Republican Mitch McConnell, telling reporters that they will not fund the Trump border wall in the upcoming spending bill. Joining these top Republican Party U.S. congressional leaders in defying President Trump and the Christian American people to keep the demonic globalist agenda in the United States alive, this report states that are the equally powerful so-called conservative multi-billionaire activists Charles and David Koch, known as the Koch brothers, who for the first time in their history are now openly supporting the Democratic Party as they want all U.S. borders to be immediately abolished. Furthermore, attacking President Trump on his supposed to be secure Republican Party right flank, this report continues, is longtime Republican Party stalwart columnist George Will, who is now urging everyone to vote for the demonic globalist Democrats, with Will being joined by the equally longtime Republican Party warmonger Max Boot, who astonishingly is now proclaiming that he would take Obama back in a nanosecond because Boot obviously insanely says his presidency appears to be a lost golden age when reason and morality reigned. Really? While being attacked on his own Republican Party right flank, President Trump is likewise battling the demonic globalist Democratic Party on his left flank too. Best example by one of these Democrats' main spokeswoman, U.S. Congress member Maxine Waters, who's now declaring that she's been sent by God to destroy Trump and is urging everyone in America to take to the streets in rage against him, with her further vowing to wipe out President Trump's tax cuts for the American people once the Democrats retake power, and her ominously threatening to throw President Trump out of office once Democrats are supposedly back in charge and directly stating, look out Trump, you're in trouble. Well, you know what, Maxine Waters? You're on a hell bent because you know that you're going to be voted out in November of 2018. Joining the demonic globalist U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters in destroying President Trump, supposedly, and Christianity in America, in her U.S. Senate counterpart, Kirsten Gillibrand, obviously of New York probably, who is vowing, once the Democrats retake control, to abolish the United States border police force. That would then allow tens of millions of illegals to flood into the United States. But with the U.S. House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunes warning that the deep state is failing to turn over critical documents in their hopes that the Democrats will win in November. One of whose most critical of Congressman Nunes stunningly declares the American public will be shocked when they see it. Obviously, the redacted reports, of course. Now former Trump campaign chairman Steve Bannon now declaring that the upcoming 2018 midterm election is, in fact, President Trump's first re-election campaign. This report states that these demonic globalists are preparing to hit President Trump with everything they've got. To begin with, a hailstorm of global economic news coming this week showing how close the Western economy really is to collapsing and that has global markets in fear of, most particularly due to Japan offering to buy unlimited bonds to prop up their markets. China's economy nearing a total system failure and the U.S. housing market accelerating towards a collapse that will rival that seen during the 2007-2008 global economic collapse. 
So this master plan envisioned by these demonic globalists, this report concludes, is to create a global economic crisis that will send millions of Americans into the streets to protest about it, with these rage-induced peoples then throwing the Republican Party out of power in, of course, the 2018 midterm elections, well, at least they hope, for the U.S. Congress, that will be immediately followed by never-Trumper Republicans and leftist socialist Democrats joining forces to throw President Trump out of office. Good luck with that with them then attacking Russia as a means to keep President Trump's forces from rallying to his defense. That won't matter. And that has caused Foreign Minister Lavrov of Russia, of course, to just warn that our awareness of what plans the U.S. and other Western countries' militaries are nursing in relation to the Russian Federation is guaranteed. And his further vowing that whatever happens in the world our security as a state, the security of our citizens, our sovereignty will be most securely protected. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, President Trump is battling on all fronts. He's getting attacked from the left and from the right. We need to make sure that we protect him from the front and the back. Well, if you love politics, you're probably up to date. The fight to replace House Speaker Paul Ryan highlights a split among some Republican lawmakers. Congressman Kevin McCarthy has put the focus on preventing Democrats from taking the Speaker's gavel. I do not want to see Nancy to come back as Speaker. I want the next Speaker to come from California. I just don't want it to be Nancy. I want it to be me. And then Jim Jordan's run for House Speaker, meanwhile, pits the Ohio Congressman against what he calls the establishment Republicans. It's the town. It's Washington. The swamp is the swamp. They don't like someone like Donald Trump coming in there and changing the swamp and changing the way that town works. There's just this reluctance to ever change. They're both running. They're both Republicans, but they're running on different platforms. Let's bring in our political panel for more insight. South Carolina radio host Josh Kimbrell and Democratic strategist Kevin Whaling. Thank you both for joining me. I appreciate it. Now, Kevin, I, I think I know where you probably stand on this because you probably, <laughs> you probably we're going to get to Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. But, but Josh, I want to start with you because these are two very different, I guess you could say, factions of the Republican Party. And are they going to be splitting the vote? Well, they're going to split the vote for up until we agree on somebody who's going to beat Nancy Pelosi or whoever the Democrats put forward. I can tell you that much. I, I personally ascribe to the House Freedom Caucus approach here. I like what Jim Jordan's saying. We've got to drain the swamp, change out the establishment. Uh, what I would say to Kevin is that we've got Kevin McCarthy on the Republican side, Nancy Pelosi on the Democratic side, both of whom are political dinosaurs. They're so yesterday's news. We need to put new candidates forward, change the blood and leadership, and make Congress work again. Okay, but Kevin, I want to bring you in the conversation because Jim Jordan obviously is speaking on behalf of the Freedom Caucus. For sure. those who know politics, know that that's about 30 members of the Republican Party who, who by and large, really do a lot to, to block if you will, to block votes, let's be honest. Yeah. So are you running on, on blocking? How does, that, how does that work? Sure, Elizabeth, we are 101 days today from the midterm elections. Uh, and it's really interesting to see the conversation that's going on in, in both parties. You know, parties are like big families. And to see, you know, the fact that uh, Jim Jordan is already out, vocal, the first announced candidate for Republican leadership uh, in November, you know, it's the Freedom Caucus that torpedoed uh, Kevin McCarthy's bid for speaker last time, four years ago, which is how we got Paul Ryan. Now to see an announced uh, member of that Freedom Caucus running uh, is going to be really interesting heading into the fall. Okay, Josh, how would he get support from establishment candidates? When we're talking about Jim Jordan, like how, how would this play out? Well, what I think is going to happen, first off, we've got to focus on making sure Republicans retain the Congress in November. Yeah, and, and right. One of the concerns we can't be I've talking had, about, right, well, yeah. we, we were making assumptions here because well, we haven't even gotten well, to the possibility of a, a Speaker Pelosi, right? Like we have, we, we're we making I, I assumptions believe, that the Republicans are going to keep the House, which they may not. Well, I believe that they will, but it's going to, they're going to have to focus. I mean, right now, if you look at what's happened, we've had uh, almost two years, a year and a half of the, uh, the Trump presidency. We've had Republican control of Washington in both chambers of Congress and the presidency, yet Congress is looking to run a trillion-dollar deficit 
uh, again this year. We have still got Obamacare as the law of the land. Republicans were not thrilled about that. So what the Congress needs to do right now, instead of fighting over who's going to hold the gavel, is make sure our party's actually going to be able to hold right. the gavel. And that yeah. means to continue to pass the conservative agenda, the Republican agenda, uh, work with the president, try to get rid of Obamacare. I know Kevin probably doesn't like that, but we've got to roll back regulations, streamline spending, eliminate some agencies, reduce the deficit, and then they can fight over who's going to be speaker. But right now, that all, you I know, view it as Josh, fighting over deck chairs in the That all actually panic. involves Congress getting things done. Am I right? And so, I, Kevin, I want to yeah. get your response, too, because we were making some assumptions on the Republican side. We also can assume that there's a possibility of Nancy Pelosi. You can't tell me that she's going to have a smooth ride to the top. I mean, that's music to my ears in terms of what Josh is saying, uh, taking the fight to the Republican leadership that has really been ineffective for delivering on Republican uh, proposals. I mean, the Obamacare is still the law on the land. Now they're talking about a second uh, tax cut because the first, first round uh, hasn't gone to plan. Uh, and again, we have a very short timeline in the next 101 days. And we're also facing a, a potential government shutdown. I so know, the, but the, you know what? She's got. Kevin, She's having Kevin, candidates who are excited. winning primaries. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, you see the enthusiasm on the Democratic side. But and you see that? enthusiasm but Kevin, to make sure that excited. Nancy doesn't get it. Sure, I mean, even the, if they have the majority. Sure, I mean, what Nancy Pelosi is out there doing is, you know, she's raised eighty-seven million dollars so far this cycle. Kevin McCarthy's raised about forty. She's out there stumping for her candidates. And when she was said, you know, what, what's your reaction to so many Democrats saying they're not going to support you for speaker? She said, just win, and then we can have that conversation, you know, in October, November, December, uh, once the Democrats take back the House. And All that's right, going to be our I'll focus. Give you, I'll give you but, the last word. We're getting Kevin, the time cue. Don't get too excited yet, Kevin. I mean, first off, I mean, my got party's a lot of work got some to do. divisions. Your party, your party's a disaster. You've got Ocasio Cortez who's saying she's a straight up socialist. You're the party a party of Bernie Sanders. Uh, don't get too excited yet. I think my party needs to do more. I think our Republican Congress needs to govern better. But your party strategy right now has just been obstruct and block, and that's not working either. So you I guys, think both you guys have control both chambers. Both it's parties your, have work it's to your do. position too. Okay. <laughs> Well, Kevin, Josh, thank you so much. The fun part about all this Thanks, is that Liz. we really thank don't you. know what's going to happen in 101 days, and yeah. we're all along for the ride, so we'll talk about it before and after. Thank you, gentlemen.